Welcome back everybody. What you're about to see is the edited reaction to Porridge. The full reaction is only for my channel members. This is something that I've I've been reacting to in the server for a bit now. Quite enjoy it. I know a lot of y'all have requested it, so here's gonna be a it's an edited version. We'll see if we can't get it across here. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, Fetch. So you, you, you was expecting me. They informed you. They informed me, yeah. Uh, only temporary, they said. You're too right, it's only temporary, Gobba. Single soul is his by rights, mine. Yeah, it's not mine. Yeah, Fletcher doesn't like the fact at all right here that he's getting a uh, roomie, even if it's just for a single night, which normally in jail or prison anyways, you're not going to be assigned to sell to yourself unless it's solitaire or solitary, so... You're not going to have a bunk bed in solitary. It's just going to be the single bed and pretty much nothing. So, yeah. My fault. No, I'm just saying. It's only temporary. All right, all right. Dump your stuff. Don't stand in my light. Go on, get out of it. Is this where you want me to sleep? What? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, you're on the bottom bunk. Yeah. Well, if you wouldn't mind shifting your stuff, I what? could... Oh, dear. God almighty. <laughs> it's not my fault. So you keep saying. He had a riot on my landing, and uh, my cellmate, Banksy, was one of the ringleaders, like, set fire to his mattress and mine. Egg case that, Banks. For a riot to happen, someone burned their mattress and stuff like that. That definitely... I love the fact that he's a head case. Well, yeah, you think, but... Uh, yeah, they, they'd, they'd definitely be transferring him to a different unit. He'd, uh, he'd be in a cell by his lonesome for a long, 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 long time. Uh, there'd be no need to request a unit to himself or a room to himself like Fletcher did. They'd be like, well, you can't be around other people. It's being transferred. Egg case. Hey, it weren't a bad bloke to share a cell with. He was always very nice to me. He uh, showed me the ropes, taught me cribbage. Never displayed no violence. Oi, oi. He, uh, he smuggled this kitten into his cell and from the way he handled it, you could see the gentle side of his nature. Before he lit his mattress, I heard he threw a screw off a top landing. That <laughs> <laughs> weren't hurt. He hit the safety net. <laughs> that gobber is somewhat academic, isn't it? The fact remains that a 15-stone prison officer was hurled off the top landing <laughs> by your cellmate, Mighty Joe Banks. Well, only because he said he couldn't keep the kitten. I can't see that cutting much ice with his parole board. Can't see the arm itself. Well, look, it's rules. That's what the arm is. It's just rules, isn't it? It's, it's prison procedure, isn't it? I mean, you can keep caged birds. Sometimes they let you keep caged birds or insects in matchboxes. But not cats. And old Banksy knows that, the porridge he's done. Well, it's only a little kitten. Look, kittens differ from cats only in scale, don't they, eh? They still have the same lavatorial tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> they pee on your blankets. <laughs> I can't see the arm. Well, look, it's just rules, that's all. It's rules. Like, I've got rules in this cell, haven't I? Well, not so much rules as standards, really. I mean, while you're a temporary resident in here, you've got to abide by them standards, ain't you? Which are? You don't snore, you don't rabbit, and you don't pick your nose. <laughs> don't think I do any of them. Well, that's all right, then. We should get on passably well together, shouldn't we? Well, Banksy never complained, anyhow. Well, of course he didn't, an animal like him. Well, I don't. Well, that's all right. That's fine. That's fine. You're sitting on my paper. Oh. Sorry. That's another thing and all. Look, papers. You're allowed to read the paper, all right? But when and only when I've finished with it, all right? All right. right we'll shift out of the way now. I've got some grey darning thread. You know what? I've got some grey darning thread if you want that old soda. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Tom. <laughs> Your standards don't include sweaty feet, I notice. Man who's don't sweat in alpha, is he? It's like a dog with a dry nose. <laughs> you settling in all right? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Yeah, keep me pecker up. They can't grind me down these nurks in here. Bide your time, that's what it's all down to, isn't it? Bide your time. It's unnatural, isn't it? Men in cages. 
Bide your time. I don't mind work. And as I'm in the kitchen, I get plenty of grub, but, uh, well, the screws ain't bad by and large, but... Oh, no night, sunshine. <laughs> Chalmers nook. <laughs> yeah, this is the bit I can't stand. What? Lock up. It's only quarter to eight. It's barely dark out there. If I was at home now, I'd just be getting ready to go out for the evening. <laughs> What's the point in it, son, eh? You're in here to be punished, ain't you, eh? You're in here to forego all them little pleasures that you took for granted over the years, ain't you? Like a comfy shirt, decent smoke. Night out. Night out. If you're keen, we could go out, you know. Oh, yeah, I could ring up a couple of birds, you know. <laughs> a couple of them darlings that dance on top of the pops, you know what I mean? Oh, well, now he's going to take it, pull his yeah. leg. It's one special one. Beautiful babs. I don't know what her name is. <laughs> We could uh, ring up and meet them uh, uh, at an Italian restaurant, couldn't we, eh? Up west, lovely. And we could go on from there somewhere, nightclubs, you know what I mean? Dance till dawn. Then back to their luxurious penthouse flat and wallop. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, I'd done all that last night. I'm a bit knackered. <laughs> Anyhow, we'd have to get all ponced up. You would have to darn the holes in me socks, wouldn't you? Now, why don't we just have a, have a quiet night in, eh? All right? If you say so, Fletcher. That's what you've got to tell yourself, just having a quiet night in, see? Trouble is, I've got 698 quiet nights in to go. <laughs> Less than some. Do you think she'll wait? What? Do you think she'll wait? Who? Denise, my fiance. Oh, Denise, your fiance, yeah. Oh, dear. I don't know. I shouldn't think she'll wait in for 698 nights. Well, she's my fiance. I know, but when she promised to love you forever, she didn't know she was going to be deprived of you any other two years, did she? I can't sleep at night through thinking about it. Um, you don't want to start any of that. Don't start any of that. Nope, you and Joe, you definitely don't want to be thinking too hard about your loved ones. Uh, <clears throat> lost a job. Wasn't able to find another one. Wasn't able to pay child support because of it. Went to jail for six months. Tell you what, that first month before I got work release, It was all sleeping and playing spades. Better playing rummy with somebody if one of the uh, people in there wanted to play rummy. And afterwards, it was work during the day at night time, watch whatever they had on television, and play spades. So that way you keep yourself busy because you think about the people on the outside and you go crazy. I couldn't see my kids for six months and damn near drove me insane. Not that I've ever been overly sane, but it's work. And carnal thoughts, no good lying there thinking and twitching about what you're not going to get, no. <laughs> Carnal thoughts, give them the big E, see? The big elbow. Less you think about women, the better. God blimey, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty Queen Shocks Council. Lovely Sharon Spencer, 22. She's more than 22, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> They're more like 44, ain't they? <laughs> Each. <laughs> Shocked the town council when they learned that she played the top title role in the new sensational film, The Virgin and the Vicar. <laughs> I wonder which she played. The Virgin <laughs> and the Vicar. <laughs> Had we known, said a council spokesman, we would never have crowned her floral queen. I don't know what all the fuss is about, says Sharon, a former convent girl whose hobbies include water skiing and carpentry. <laughs> I'm proud of my body, and what I do with it in my spare time is none of the council's business. Yeah. Skiing and carpentry, so she was in a, <laughs> the virgin and the vicar, so she, she handles wood more than one way. Interesting. <laughs> Wouldn't even get planning permission for that, would you? <laughs> what was I saying? You were saying the less you think about women, the better. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carnal thoughts. Carnal thoughts are fatal, yeah. You know, she Fletcher is definitely right on that. The, the less you think about family and the less you think about especially women, the less issues you'll have because uh, you won't get uh, lonely and, well, you'll still be lonely. There's always that aspect of loneliness. But I love the fact that he's he's they're having conversations, but he's still giving, it's very much life advice pretty much, at least prison life advice. Um and it's just peppered throughout this. And 
I love the transformation as we take and go how this kind of relationship we see it kind of morph just in the single episode. I, I just love I, this is an awesome ep episode. Albeit a grubby one in a little back room. Nah, nothing like that. Not a model like them. No. Nah. Insular. Did you? Yeah, nothing mucky like. You know, she was just um, expressing herself, posing like. You know what I mean? Look that. <laughs> <laughs> Son, what will the neighbours think, eh? <laughs> They'd be the talk of the block. That's what that's what will wind up happening. You doing stuff like that, he's gonna be the y'all gonna be the talk of the block. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I love this. I, this whole episode as it goes through, and I'm only reason why I'm stopping this as much as I have. Uh, and then interject these because you can definitely see that I'm not wearing the same thing as I did for the original reaction is because I'm going to have to take and stop it every, every, a lot more, or at least make a lot more insertions of stuff like this to comment on what I'm seeing, give it critique or just a commentary of what I'm seeing. And I'll be honest with you, the more I, I take and watch through this with editing and stuff like this, the this, this is one of the best episodes of British television I've seen ever. And, and I've been through a whole season of Only Fools and Horses. I've watched a couple, you know, I've watched Dairy Girls and I've watched a couple of different of y'all's shows. And the fact that this episode stays in a single cell and you see character development of two characters within this whole episode and the morphing of a relationship to, uh, or the morphing of a friendship to something that's, yeah, we'll, we'll just, a, as it starts happening more and more and more, I'll just comment, comment on it more and more and more. <laughs> oh, it's all right as far as I'm concerned, mate. They all know which side my bread's buttered. No, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> it's you I'm worried about, you know, a young boy like you, a growing lad can come to arm, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, half the fairies around here would go into a frenzy if I saw you doing that, you know. I'm engaged to Denise. Yeah, the the whole that that mentioning of fairies that wouldn't that definitely wouldn't. I don't know. It depends on the type of show and everything like that. It would it could work, but fairies referencing uh, people that are that are gay. Um, that's seen as very derogatory these days. So it. There's a lot of stuff, and, and the thing is, like, it's not even a big word, and it's not even, there's no malice behind it when he says it, you can tell, you know, context being everything, but everybody gets their their panties in a wad these days, so something like that would probably be, the writers would probably be gnashing their teeth unless, depending on how it was put or what character and everything like that, but he's right, like, you, you, they'd see him make that move, and they'd be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And the fact that he brings up he's got a fiancé at home. Well, you ain't at home, homie. You was in prison. <laughs> they don't care about that fiancé at home. Well, that means naff all of them, doesn't it, eh? I mean, they're all engaged to each other, aren't they? <laughs> no, no, I mean, Denise is a thing of the past, isn't she? She's just a photograph under your pillow. Just a, just a letter in your top pocket, right? Just a, a warm tingle in your loins. Yeah, don't matter whenever you're in if you if you got family or anything like that. Unless, uh... Less it's time for visitation or phone calls. They're just they're just figments of your imagination while you're in there. That or conversation pieces. That's it. And me what? <laughs> your loins. What are loins? <laughs> well, loin <laughs> Look, you know when you're lying there in the middle of the night thinking of Denise, right? And you're thinking of all the lovely times you've had together, yeah? Don't you get a little warm tingle? Yeah. Well, where you get it, that's your loin. <laughs> Surprised he didn't take and launch into a whole birds and the bees, but look on his face when he said, what's your loins like? Are you serious? And then his explanation is just, oh my God. <laughs> I love this show. I love this show. I'm editing this it, it, to get it through for the copyright stuff, and I'm still I'm chuckling at scenes in this. <laughs> I thought they were. There are lots of names.
<laughs> Yo. She's a very physical girl, is Denise. I love that. He just looked straight down. I thought there, there's a lot of names for him. He <laughs> just wanted to end that conversation quick. <laughs> The fact, I think you can tell he's like, what? I have to explain this? Oh, hell. She was a beauty queen. Well, sort of. She was a finalist in the office machinery exhibition. Miss Duplicating, she was. Her picture was in the paper, and she'd become a pinup of 2,000 sailors on an aircraft carrier in Gibraltar. They wrote to her, and they said she was the girl they'd most like to have ink in their roller. <laughs> <laughs> that must have made you very proud, Len. Sure they wanted her to do more than just ink their rollers. Just saying. Bunch of sailors? Oh, dear God. That's, that's not where you want a calendar with your girl uh, to be at. Just, nah. 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 Nah, it's, it's a floating prison, basically. And my son, to think your Denise, your little fiancé, was a sexual fantasy of an entire aircraft carrier. <laughs> uh, didn't know her then. Uh, that was before she moved to Smedic. Before that never-to-be-forgotten day in a supermarket where I met her in the ball ring. <laughs> That's in Birmingham. She was stamping special offer on giant-sized jars of pickled onions. <laughs> and I come round the corner from sauces and condiments and me wire trolley went over her foot. <laughs> it was a magic moment. We both knew. <laughs> he says it was a magic moment and all I can think of is the drifters. This magic moment. Because it doesn't sound all that magical. It just sounds like uh, you run into someone in a grocery store and something come out of it. So you're, you know, you, you kind of, <laughs> you meet in, in, in a way that's probably different from a lot of folks, just saying. And I said to her, I said straight off, I said, will you meet me outside? And she said, all right. God preserve us, God, but what? <laughs> I mean, romance. How do you mean? It was beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure it was. All I'm saying is... I hope you find somewhere a bit more romantic next time if you have your time again to meet the love of your life. Oh dear. For me, this is where this is part of where we start seeing that transformation take place of the friendship and stuff like that because they're getting into more serious matters, matters of the heart, and just the way this all evolves as this episode goes is just absolutely brilliant in my opinion. I just I think this right here, this little piece right here is just kind of the beginning of that because we're about to take and get into to Fletcher and his, how he, he met the love of his life and everything of that nature. And just the dichotomy of like their opinions, but also his reminiscing as we go forward in a couple of spots. Of course, if any more romantic. No, no, I can't say it was really, no, no. Funny how often we take and give someone crap for how they meet someone and the part where he kind of gives them crap, I kind of cut out. But uh, funny how we give someone crap and then, we did. We don't have anything really any more grandiose than what they've given us. I was a city boy like you. Mind you, it was just after the war, so I had a bit more space, you know. And it was mainly bomb sites. <laughs> of course, there was uh, there was the cinema too. There was the Muswell Hill Odeon, or the back seat of a car. Are we talking about meeting spots here? Or are we talking about like meeting spots here? I think we're talking about the meeting spots here. You know, where you kind of get it on. You know, the, the, the whole, let's get it on, that type of deal. I think that's what we're talking about here, right? If I could open one. <laughs> <laughs> but we seem to have a bit more, I don't know, a bit more scope somehow, you know. I mean, these great big gray. I love how he's considering the fact that now that things have kind of been repaired and time has gone on and more people are around, there's less room to do, you know, the hanky-panky, uh, less meeting places for stuff like that. Concrete. Forbidding tower blocks. I mean, there's, there's no hiding place, is there, eh? Can't make love in a laundrette. We did. <laughs> did you? Yeah, it was very quiet at the time. Oh, I'm glad to. That's a great relief. Funny, he was just talking about doing it in the back of a car, and now that uh, he said something about doing it in a laundrette, he's like, What's this? <laughs> He's like, what? You just tell by, like, wait, what? <laughs> and just a tone of voice, like, he's, he's, he's not approving of that at all. Well, we had three bags fulls to do and it was bitter out. Well, that hardly qualifies you, does it, eh? <laughs> three bag fulls. Mind you, I don't know Birmingham myself. Now, my oldest... And this right here is where we get into... We start getting into some of the family stuff because he starts talking about his kid and stuff like that and his, his missus. And for me, this is one of the more intimate parts of the thing, uh, of the episode, almost uh, more so than the conversation they have later 
um, after Fletcher's been woken up. Ingrid. Ingrid. Oh yeah, Ingrid. Yeah, the old lady called her Ingrid after a famous film star, Ingrid Bergman, what was uh, sweeping the country at the time. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't suppose you've ever heard of her, have you? Hey, eh? Casablanca. For whom the bell tolls, spellbound. Funny, Casablanca and For Whom the Bell Tolls, both both movies that Ingrid Bergman did with uh, Humphrey Bogart. And Casablanca, in my opinion, is one of the best movies of all time, regardless. Like, it, it's it's just, it's set up so perfectly. But the fact that, you know, she's, she's a big name at the time in movies and they name a kid after it. It's nice to see that, you know, that kind of thing has been going on for a long, 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 long time. Oh, I think I've seen that one on the telly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, is that the one where there's these scientists in a secret laboratory in Arizona and this bloke drinks a substance by mistake and turns into a werewolf and then he carries off the mad doctor's niece and does things to her in the catacombs? <laughs> Bro, what movies is he watching? I want to... What's the name of it? No. No, no, that definitely wasn't one of Ingrid's, no. I think I can say, without fear of contradiction, that Ingrid was never in no catacombs with no werewolf, no. My daughter Ingrid may have been, but, uh, <laughs> not the last... So Ingrid hadn't been in the catacombs, but your daughter might have been? Exactly what has your daughter been up to? Because, um, I don't... Uh, hmm, hmm. Lovely Miss Bergman, you know. Yeah, what were you going to say about your daughter Ingrid? I love the story that he's about to tell about uh, his daughter and her, uh, how she come into the, or conception. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry for all the pauses again. I know it's breaking up the flow, but about every five to seven seconds is about what I'm having to try to take and do this at five, seven, ten seconds, something like that. So that way, yeah. Apologies. Hi. Oh, was I? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, my daughter Ingrid, my oldest. Now, this is between you and me, Gob, all right? She was actually conceived uh, in Igot Cemetery. <laughs> yeah. You see, we wasn't married at the time. Mind you, we got married as soon as we knew little Ingrid was on the way, like, you know, but at the time, we wasn't. And uh, we needed somewhere flat to consummate the passion. We felt... Needed somewhere flat to consummate the passion. Sure. Sure. Beds don't work. For each other. <laughs> Cemetery? Yeah. Oh, well, it's a very famous and historic cemetery, you know. It still seems a bit indecent to me. Well, it's not as in... I love how he takes on this, like, wait a minute tone as he's talking about... As... <laughs> he's being questioned about doing it the... in the graveyard. Like, the graveyard just seems indecent to me. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just the turning of the tables here, but again, this this goes so much to I think the uh, the trans the transformation of the friendship and the strengthening of of things. Uh, I just again and the brilliance of the fact that all of this, every single bit of this so far, has happened one room, not going from his room to the kitchen or his room to fixing a hole on the side, you know digging a ditch on the side of the road like they do in uh, the, the next episode on this show or anything like that not showing the cafeteria nothing nothing like that nothing them eating no 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 that's all in one single solitary room and the fact that they've they've been able to take keep your attention through the banter and the talk and stuff like that that's in this episode for me is just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal decent to support in your local laundry is it eh? <laughs> three bags full <laughs> Anyhow, it wasn't premeditated because we originally went there to view, to view the tomb. <laughs> we went there to view the tomb of Karl Marx, you see. Yeah. Because I was going through a political list. Just so happened to go there to see the tomb of Karl Marx because, you know, you're getting interested in things, but sex broke out. <laughs> How does that happen exactly? How did we get from point A to point B on this one? Just refresh my memory here stage at the time and I was also a bit randy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> My political career didn't go, really go further than scrawling on viaduct walls. One of the other things I love about this episode is the back history that you get of Fletcher that you haven't gotten in previous episodes up to this point. We're three episodes into the show and you're finally starting to take and hear not only the familial stuff but also kind of personal backstory with the, you know, it's got political, you know, with the Communist Party and stuff like that. 
painting on the viaduct walls and, and things of that nature. And it's just a, lo a lovely bit of character building uh, within an episode that, again, I think is one of the better pieces of TV I've seen to this point. Uh, in my journey of react to British TV shows, comedy and culture and everything of that nature, it's just brilliantly, brilliantly done, in my opinion. And I've done that. Have you? I painted Lenny Godbill of Denise Shorter on a warehouse wall. Denise Shorter? Yeah, my fiance. Oh, that Denise Shorter. Oh, yeah. I couldn't. Oh, I ain't got me things off yet. No, oh, don't matter. Here, shove over some, will you? Come on. Yep, no warning on that one. Just boop. Lights out. Bedtime. Oh, God. Blimey. <laughs> Something's hurt me foot, something's stuck in it. It must be my darning needle. Oh, what's it doing there? Who's <laughs> darning your sock? Well, can't it wait till the morning? Oh, now you Well, he's done found every one of those sharp utensils that he has in that room. Oh, my God. It's just... Oh! Ah! Oh! Uh, after that dance, if anybody saw that, they might think something else going on in there. You trod on my other foot now. I didn't mean to. You've injured both my feet one at a time, Gobba. I didn't mean to. Well, get in the bed, will you, son? I ain't undressed yet. Look, just get in the bed till I get in the bed. You can get out and get undressed to get back in the bed, can't you? <laughs> You're trying to make sure there ain't nothing else that's going to take and <laughs> hurt him before he gets to the bed. Just lay down. You can do it afterwards. Like, just this whole bedtime routine. He's just used to going to bed by himself without a roommate or anything in this in this, in this this room that they've put him in since he requested it and all that good stuff. Simple enough, isn't it? No room to move about in these places. No privacy. It's... Oh, dear. I bet you... Kind of the whole point of jail, ain't it? No privacy? Like, you, you're being punished, but... <laughs> he is not happy at bedtime tonight. No and all. You done off rabbit. <laughs> You want a liquor sauce or? No, I don't want a liquor sauce. <laughs> Where'd you get liquor sauce? <laughs> Swapped them for a pound of margarine whipped from the kitchen. This right here, I love the fact that number one, he's <laughs> going to bed. He's going to offer him some candy, but mo more than that, he's talking about swapping goods. You know, swapping something in the kitchen for some sweets. Which, if you've been to jail, you. you the, the trading commodities are very much, that's that's very much a thing. I'll trade you honey bun for this. I'll trade you a pack of noodles for this. I'll trade you, you know, stamps, you know, a couple of stamps worth for something. I'll trade you, you know, this, that, the other for um, phone time and things of that nature. So the fact that that's something they actually, that's an aspect they take and bring into this, uh, in this episode is, is pretty cool, which normally, you know, you we've seen Fletcher do it for other stuff. Him taking a... <laughs> But just between the two roommates or, you know, t even if it's temporary roommates offering something to like, how did you, in the, the bartering aspect coming into play, um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's one of the things also that struck me about, uh, that strikes me about this show. Just some of the simple little nuances that while exaggerated it, it you know, for the show, it, for some of it or liberties taken stuff like, you know, trading and bartering in in jailhouses or prison for another good that you want definitely definitely happens um so yeah learning ain't you little victories yeah you told me that let's get some kip shall we hey fletcher what do you know what i've found useful since i've been inside what have you found useful copper well i've started doing something that i haven't done since i was a kitty <laughs> Do you know what I do? I'll shudder to think so. <laughs> I pray. That's definitely something that people, uh, if they didn't pray before, they either start or they find religion. And if they stop praying at some point in time, they restart because, well, at night you can't go to sleep. What else are you going to do? Because especially if you're in a cell like that instead of like a, a big pod where people are, a bunch of people like I was in, uh, there was a bunch of, bunch of people in the, in the pod, there's like 60 of us, I think. So at night, if you went, to, you slept at night, normally, if you couldn't go to sleep, well, there's always a, a card game of some sort going on, spades or rummy or somebody's playing tunk or something like that. So, but yeah, praying is definitely something that, 
if you didn't do it before, you might start, and if uh, you used to, you'd, you'd probably start again. How you pray? Yeah, I sort of say me prayers. Go for service. <laughs> That's what I keep asking him. So if you don't mind. If you must. Dear God, thank you for getting me through another day. Thank you for the letter from Denise and the licorice all sorts. <laughs> Please look after Denise in your infinite wisdom. And the same applies to me, ma'am, dad, wherever he is. <laughs> and the Auntie Vi and Uncle Donald. Oh, he's going through all the family. Oh, Lord. Rita in Newport, Pagnum. <laughs> Sissy and Stu. At this point, you can tell Fletcher, he's looking down, he's probably thinking, oh, God, he's going to pray for the whole entire planet in prison? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> And all the lads in the darts team at the Bell and Dragon. <laughs> and Norman. And Frida and her husband who emigrated to Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> and please, God, look after Fletcher and forgive him for being such a bad tempered, cantankerous. <laughs> 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 So your God in his infinite wisdom isn't giving you a peaceful night after all, is he? <laughs> Weren't one of the things I asked for. Oh, no, true, that's true, that's true. Huh. I shouldn't think he's getting much kip either, all that list that you gave him. Don't be irreverent. Eh? Don't be irreverent, oh dear. You're changing your spots, aren't you? When you first came in here, first day at reception, you didn't know whether you was C of E, press beef or flaming. Yeah, even if you're wet behind the ears and never uh, been in jail, you, you kind of, the adjustment period is quick and kind of has to be. But the fact that he's taking the time, oh, you've changed, haven't you? Like even, you know, it's, you notice when someone comes in and they're like, oh crap, oh crap, deer in the headlights. And then they kind of catch on pretty quick of, of, of how things work. Hey buddies, did you? <laughs> Don't think he matters much. I just believe in God. Don't think he matters which lot you support. I admit my belief's only been revived since I come in here. Because I used to pray when I was a kid. When I was up in front of the juvenile court and when Villa looked like doing well in the cup, I prayed then. And again, that this character building and backstory, and again, we're in it's such an intimate setting because it's just a one single cell and now one of them can't get to sleep and they're both talking and he's bringing up the fact that he's been, you know, he's been before juvenile courts before and his religious background and things like that. And it just, just, this is so well done. <laughs> but I don't know, it didn't seem to work out. I got probation and Villa lost to Rotherham, won nothing. <laughs> Funny, he's praying for a good outcome for his court date and for his team to win. I mean, there's worse things to pray for, you know. But <laughs> I say it turned out all right. One for you know, one for two. That it, it's you're batting five hundred at least. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Eh? People don't give it a second thought, do they? Eh? As long as everything's chugging along all right, they carry on with scant regard to the Ten Commandments, don't they? Stealing, committing adultery, coveting each other's oxes, <laughs> and suddenly wallop in the face of adversity. Oh, please God, please help your loyal and faithful servant. Yeah, you're right. And that whole finding religion only whenever things aren't going well. Seems to be a lot of folks. And uh, the, the fact that he's bringing up that fact after he's been told, you know, what what was prayed for and everything like that. It, it's just, yeah, it, it's funny. Anyway, yeah. But I am in the face of adversity. I hate prison, Fletcher. I hate the air of defeat and the smell of disinfectant. I hate the noise and the keys, and I hate not having a handle on the... The, the fact that we kind of get the gamut of everything, a, a typical type conversation that you might actually hear in a jail cell. It, it's just, again, this is just a masterful, masterful job of writing and shooting and everything else like that for a, a television show. Side of that door. Yeah. Well, kids like you, they shouldn't be in prison, should they, eh? Not really. I mean, it's the, uh, it's the system, isn't it? You're not here to be reformed or rehabilitated, are you? You're just here for public revenge, aren't you? And again, you just get this, uh, now we're getting into societal matters with the it, prison, jail not being rehabilitation, but it's, it's, 
it's punishment for sure, but it, it's like you said, it's them getting back at for the mis misdeeds instead of any attempt at rehabilitation. Now with me, it's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? And me, it's a well, it's occupational hazard, isn't it? Being as how my occupation is breaking the law. <laughs> Still, my family's never gone short, you know. Nah, I've got a wife and three kids, you know. Want a bit of this? Me too. Yeah. I'll and again we're getting even more backstory so we've gotten we've gotten some banter back and forth the rules of the road and everything of that nature we got you know how the love lives began and everything of that nature as far as relationships are concerned the woe is me for being in here i hate being in here and things of that nature we got the societal aspect of stuff now we go back to more of the character building because he's talked about you know having a life of crime basically being occupational hazard um and then launch into family, talking about his family's never wanted. So just, again, the, the intimate setting of this and the way this is this whole episode is written, it encapsulates so much in such a short amount of time. The fact that it's only a 22-minute episode or 24-minute episode for, for the runtime, and that, that's including the intro and the outro of the show itself. For, so between the intro and the outro, you've probably got, what, 20 minutes worth of TV show and they fit so much into this and they make it so compelling. Just masterful. Absolutely masterful. A picture when it gets light. Now my youngest, he's uh, he's just got into grammar school, you know. Has he? Yeah. Very expensive school. It's nice though, but it costs a lot, you know, books, equipment, all that sort of thing. But when my son there went on the first day, he went there, he, he didn't want for nothing. Rugby boots, blazer, cap, scarf, a lot. Now, he wouldn't have had them if his father had just been a struggling clerk, would he now, eh? No. reason he had them was because his father had just robbed the school out. <laughs> <laughs> Criminal daring do or misdeeds. Of course, you're going to take and get stories like that while you're in jail. And the fact that he used a criminal activity to support his son or to take and get what his son needed in the school that cost money and things of that nature just... Did it the wrong way, even though the heart was in the right place. <laughs> Checks out. What would your son think if he knew the truth? Huh? Always think that's why the blaze is a bit big. <laughs> <laughs> so you just do it for your family then? Yeah, my old lady. Yeah. Twenty-four years we've been married, you know. That's a hell of a long time. Twenty-four years. Of course, we was married at nineteen. You see. Yeah, of course. This right here, though, again with the family family talk and it talking about his, him and his wife been together for 24 years and he's got you know ingrid and the, the the son and just yeah he's too young isn't it yeah well that is Karl marx and your eye gets boy isn't it you must love her very much yeah well yeah you know because when you were asleep like he kept saying things oh what what was i saying well he just kept saying a name over and over you know how Gloria, my love. How Gloria, Gloria, my love. Did I? Hmm. Found it very moving. So we don't have snoring, but he's calling out for... She's calling somebody's name and talking to somebody in his sleep. I don't know which one could be... Snoring could be worse depending on how badly they take and snore and how loudly they snore, but talking in your sleep can be very distracting as well. And that woke me up. <laughs> Only thing is, my old lady's called Isabel. <laughs> And it's Gloria. You may well ask. <laughs> you sure it was Gloria? Positive. Gloria. Gloria? Oh yeah, there was a Gloria. Of course there was a Gloria, yeah. Yep, just cause you're talking about talking to a lady in your sleep doesn't mean it's the one you're married to, unfortunately. Especially if you're in prison. Like, most especially if you're in prison. Cause you got your whole life, you kind of contemplate everything. So, <laughs> that might happen at time or three. Yeah, of course there was once. Well, lots of times, actually. <laughs> was that before you met your Isabel? Well, no, to be honest, Lenny, no, no. Mustn't, I, mustn't, I mustn't be untruthful. No, that was actually a bit of an indiscretion around about 1955, yeah. You see, I happened to be then, at that time, king of the Teds in Muswell Hill. <laughs> Can't help but love the color and flair they add to for the backstories and just to, to, to make the, in, the characters as interesting as possible. Because if your setting is a jailhouse there's only so much you're going to take and show so you've got to take and definitely spice things up and, and shake things up and and give interesting make the char characters interesting with the backstory and things of that nature to take and explain what happens in the future or what happens 
later on down the line and stuff like that. So it's just, uh, yeah, more just awesomeness. And she, uh, she was a, a machinist what worked at a clothing factory. So I used to go around her place, have my evil way of her, and get me trousers narrowed at the same time. <laughs> I could never be unfaithful to Denise. Oh, no, don't one. get the wrong impression now. This was just an indiscretion, you see. You have to realise my position. I mean, you can't be king of the tents and suddenly say around about 10 o'clock, I'll have to go home to the wife now, can you? <laughs> Especially when you're just smashed up an amusement arcade. <laughs> so, you don't make a habit of indiscretions, then? No, I don't. Of course I don't. Isabel's my old woman and she knows it, all right? Then who's Sharon? <laughs> Sharon? After Gloria, yo was moaning about Sharon. God, I, don't, I don't know no Sharon. You were. Oh, Sharon, she's the one on the wall, ain't she? Beauty Queen Shocks Council. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was having a dream about her, that's right. It's all coming back to me now. Carnal thoughts. All right, all right. No one asked you to eavesdrop into my private dream, did they? <laughs> <laughs> One place you can get a bit of privacy inside prison, that is, in your head. You want to remember that, my son. It's one place where you can get freedom, isn't it? Dreams is your escape, isn't it? There's no locked doors, there's no barriers, there's no frontiers. Ah, dreams is freedom. Freedom? Yeah. No locked doors, is it? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, you're right, Fletch. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get back to mine. I suggest you do the same. Oh, I will. I will do, Fletch. And thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. All right, then, where was I? <laughs> Beauty Queen Shocks Council. Oh, yeah, yeah. The way she was performing in my dream, you could see why. <laughs> It's my fault, it's yourself. Sorry if I edit your foot. <laughs> Sleep all right? Yeah. Very well since our midnight chat. Did you, uh, did you dream at all? Did you find that land of exotic fantasy I promised you, eh? Yeah. It was Denise and I. Yeah? We were in this laundrette and we got through five bagfuls without stopping. <laughs> did you? Trouble is this bloke come in and spoilt it. Oh, what great charmless nerd did that, eh? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be me, mate. I was with Sharon Spencer up the Hilton all night. <laughs> um, Fletcher? Yeah? Um, uh, well, in the rush of moving in here, like, I, uh, I mislaid something. Well, oh, yeah, what? My toothpaste. Oh, yeah? Well, I was wondering, like, if I could have a loan of yours. A loan of my toothpaste? Yeah, well, just a squeeze, like. A loan of my toothpaste, Godbar? Well, I'll give you a licorice all sort. Huh? <laughs> I've got some left. Have you got that pink one with a coconut all around it? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. All right, then. Petra? Yeah? I suppose you ain't got no flaming shaving cream now, have you, something? No, I just wanted to say thank you. What for? Well, for helping me out, like, you know, with advice. It's like that song, innit? Help me make it through the night. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're a sentimentalist, is art. You are. Well, I can see that underneath that gruff, unpleasant exterior, there's a kind man with feelings. <laughs> oh, bloody hell! <laughs> Needle. I'll scream for you, Gobber. I swear, I'll scream for you. What's going on here, then? Oh. Did you assault this man, Gobber? No, he sat on me darning needle. Is that true, Fetcher? Now, Wolf, can't you see I'm in agony? Well, why don't you get a move on? Why don't you go home and see who's been sleeping with your old lady while you've been on night? <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Oh, that is original, Fletcher. I've been having that for the last seven years. <laughs> so she and all. Yeah. 
Get off it. Oh, you can have I don't want them now. I don't want them. No, go on, take them now. It's a present like. No, all right. I won't say no, sir. It's meant as a thank you. <laughs> well, uh, when that door's locked, I am depressed and I am afraid. And well, you just make it a bit more tolerable, like. You'll get used to it, son. I mean, the night ain't all that long, is it? It's just your human spirit, you see? That's what they can't grind down and irks in here, your human spirit. We'll be all right, you and me. We could go out tonight, if you like. <laughs> With them dancers? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Or I could uh, ring up Miss, uh, Miss Sharon Spencer there, couldn't I? She's bound to have a big friend, isn't she, eh? <laughs> we could go up west again, eh? Do all the nightclubs? It's discos now. Oh, is it? Well, as you prefer, as you prefer, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyhow, give it a thought, right? Yeah, uh, well, I'll see how I feel like. That's you know. it, yeah. <laughs> Still, on the other hand, Fletch. Yeah? Well, if we don't want to go out, we could always have another quiet night in. Right. Right. fucking master class of an episode on how to take and keep something engaging and you everything was confined to Fletch's room the whole episode but the talks the advice the reminiscing just them trying to get through one night together magnificent episode fucking amazing oh my god this was, this is one of the better pieces of, of TV from any era of any time I think I've seen. Just because normally you've got a switch of scenery of some sort. The whole thing, one room. Brilliant. Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace. Peace.